Megan was born in a small backwater town. Her mother raised her alone, she did not know her father. All her poor childhood the girl dreamed of leaving that place. And still in high school she decided to become a doctor. Megan studied a lot and devoted all her free time to her studies. Eventually she achieved her goal and entered a prestigious medical university. Studying was easy for the diligent student. And after graduation the young doctor became an intern in the emergency room. It was around this time that she met her future husband, David. He worked as a senior manager in a prestigious company. The guy was born in this city into a fairly well-to-do family. He was handsome and intelligent, and no less importantly wealthy. Megan fell in love almost immediately, and when just a few months after meeting he asked her to marry him, she immediately said yes. Years went by, they lived happily, took care of each other and everything was good, except for one thing, Megan could not get pregnant. One day Megan decided to fly to her hometown and visit her mother. The woman was going to stay with her mother for two weeks. But after only three days, she realized that she missed her husband and started to go home. Megan decided not to say anything to her beloved about her imminent return and to give him a real surprise. But unfortunately, there was no surprise. To be exact, it was, but it was not a pleasant surprise. She flew in early in the morning and was already in the apartment at 6 a.m. A pungent smell of someone else's perfume hit her nose. Then she saw men's and women's clothes strewn across the floor. Unbelieving her eyes, she stepped toward the bedroom. There were two people sleeping in their marital bed. Her husband and an unfamiliar woman. There was a bottle of wine on the coffee table. Megan quietly gathered her papers and money and left the apartment. She felt so bad that she completely forgot about the suitcase standing in the hallway. When David woke up and saw the suitcase standing in the hallway he understood everything. And all the while Megan was wandering around the city. Surprisingly, the girl did not cry, and did not feel any pain. Only emptiness and loneliness. In the evening Megan called her friend Vera and asked her to stay at her house for a while. The next day David knocked on the door of Vera's apartment. He realized that his wife was probably at her best friend's house and tried to bring her home. The man said that he loved her, that he was just sad and lonely and that he himself did not understand how it had happened. After listening to her husband, she pointed him out. The divorce was finalized very quickly, there were no children or property claims. Left alone, Megan began to take frequent walks in the park in her spare time. That's where she met Zachary. She was crumbling bread for pigeons and taking pictures with her phone. Suddenly a boy of about six appeared in the frame. He chased the birds away, grabbed a piece of bread and ran away. It happened so fast that Megan did not even have time to react to it. The next day, the woman bought food and treats, went to the park and started feeding the pigeons, wondering if the child would show up. Near lunchtime, he showed up along with a little girl about four years old. When Megan noticed that they were watching from behind the bushes, she gestured to them and showed them that she had brought them food too. The children were sitting on the bench, eating treats, and Megan asked them who they were and where their parents were. So she learned that their names were Zachary and Alice. Their mother died, and their father was always drunk. They also have a little brother, but he is very small, lying in his crib and always crying. After waiting for the children to eat, Megan asked to visit them. She knew she had to, because it was very strange to see hungry children unaccompanied by adults. They lived in an old house near the park. No one paid any attention to the abandoned children, for there were hardly any neighbors. A drunken and unshaven man in dirty clothes looked out of the house. Megan told him that she had brought the children from the park and that she had brought some food as well. She was about to leave when suddenly she heard someone coughing heavily in the house. Megan, saying that she was a doctor, asked to see the sick person. The house was incredibly dirty and smelled like used diapers. There was a wheezing baby in the crib and it was clear that the baby needed immediate medical attention. The baby was taken to the hospital with suspected pneumonia. Megan was shocked by what she saw. She immediately appealed to the Committee on the Protection of Children's Rights to have the negligent and drunken father deprived of his rights. Then she obtained custody of all three children. The woman rented an apartment and hired a nanny to take care of the children while she was at work. Megan herself was surprised at how abruptly her life changed. She was happy and all thoughts of her husband and men in general left her.
One day after work she went to the store. Having bought everything she needed, the woman hurriedly went to her car and the last thing she remembered was the screeching of the brakes. Passersby called doctors and managed to write down the number of the car that hit her, the driver fled the scene. She woke up in the hospital with a moderate concussion. A day later she had a visitor, he was a white-haired man of about 45. The man was quiet, then finally introduced himself. His name was Andrew, and it turned out he was the father of the guy who hit her. Megan was confused, but the man continued. He said he had come to ask her forgiveness for his stupid and spoiled son. He promised to pay for her medical treatment and to help her in any way he could. And then he knelt down in front of her, begging her not to destroy his son and not to send him to jail. Megan was taken aback by this and asked the man to get up and not make her feel guilty. The boy's father got up and after a moment's silence said that, his son had acted horribly and had also cowardly fled from the scene of the crime, but it was his fault as a father for bringing him up so badly. His son was raised by a nanny most of the time, while he worked and built his business. The son grew up, and the father was never able to become an authority for him, even though he tried very hard. The man promised that he would send the son to the army to teach him discipline and respect. It wasn't easy for Megan to agree, but she decided that she would give the young man a second chance. In addition, she asked the man to find and pay for a full-time babysitter for the children while she was in the hospital. A week later Andrew met her outside the hospital with his son and her children. The man was holding a huge bouquet of roses. So almost a month flew by. Andrew visited Megan every day. Soon he gave the woman a box with a family ring in it. Megan was very surprised and happy of course. During this time, she realized that Andrew was a very decent and good man. That is why she agreed at once. So two lonely people found each other, and the children found a full family with a loving father and mother.